Yeah, so this is more footage from the lower brush creek drainage I've been working on here recently. And uh, this is a beautiful unit, really nice wood. The soil's pretty rich, but that helped it grow good trees. So, uh, wanted to talk a little bit about uh, cutting trees and releasing trees. I wanted to say thanks to Nuts319 who suggested it a while back. It's something I've thought of, but uh, this video seems like it might lend itself to it. And really, that's a pretty important part of a cutting operation really have a big impact. How you do it can have a big impact on your production. Also on the longevity of the machine. You know, kind of in a nutshell, the, the hot saw principle is based on the fact that the, if you cut a tree, it's, it'll stand there in kind of equilibrium for a, few, a second or two before it'll move. The tree's pretty well balanced in general. And so, really, when you're cutting a tree, what you want to do is uh, you don't want to close your clamps down on it until you uh, have the tree severed. And by doing that, you don't put any pressure on your disc, because if you put pressure on your disc, you slow it down. Uh, so then you got to allow for recovery. So um, and you can stall the saw too, and, and not go clear through it. So again, this is, I'm kind of talking about this, you know, aiming towards maybe somebody that is interested in, in running buncher but hasn't done it or just getting started or something. But I don't know. If you guys are like me, you like to watch. I watch. It. What other people work and get a lot out of it, whether it's logging or welding or machining or whatever. So, don't want to be exclusive on that. So, so anyhow, as, as I'm cutting this wood, you can see that, you know, and hear, you know, that your um, the saw remains fairly constant in sound, which is a reflection of its speed. So, like here, yeah, I'm cutting the tree, and then you can see I close down with the top clamps, and then I follow up with the accumulator arms, too. I run these on manual. I don't run auto-accumulate, and uh, but I almost always use the accumulator arms. I know some guys don't, but... Uh, particularly in wood like this, which isn't real big. It's actually perfect. There's a lot of 20-inch wood. It's perfect, but it's very tall. And uh, so I want to retain that control. You know, control is pretty important. So anyhow, once you've uh, you know, cut the tree, um, then the next thing is putting it in the pile. and. Um, you know, releasing is um, uh, is just as important. And um, so, what you want to do when you're releasing, like right here, is you're you're tipping towards your location, and as the tree goes in that direction, you release it. And this is very critical to the longevity of the machine. And uh, you can really put a lot of wear on a machine, on the components of the head and the, the uh, tool cylinder, the stick, really everything on it by shock loading it, by holding on to the tree when it falls. So really you are just releasing the tree into your pile. And, you know, so... I think what goes along with this is like when you're cutting, you know, you need to know where your next stem is. Um, like when I cut a tree, I'm thinking about where it's going to go. And then when I swing around and let it go, I'm thinking about my next tree 
So when I'm swinging into it, I've already got that picked out, kind of got an idea of uh, what I'm going to do. And uh, that really helps get your production out too. So. So in general, I was I felt like I, in watching this footage, I felt like I was doing pretty good. Uh, but you know, we do have I do have a tree coming up here that'll kind of show, you know, that that uh, shock load because it does happen, you know, and, and uh, um, you know it's just something you want to avoid. Um, I find that generally when it happens to me or most often it's like my first pile into a bundle and um, in terms of breakage i find that that is the tree that'll you know quite often you'll get breakage on because um, you're laying it right on the ground there's nothing to cushion it and um, so as i'm swinging into it and releasing the tree I sometimes, you know, have a, you know, kind of second guess myself, and uh, that second guessing will lead to maybe holding on, you know, a moment too long. So, another thing about using the head that I do, I'm always curious what other guys do, but like I, I move stuff around a lot. You know, I don't want, you know, trees to be crossed up in the bundle and I move you know old chunks and stuff to put them in leads so I don't cross them up and break the wood I'm cutting so when I do that I generally tip the head um, at an angle close my accumulators and use the top clamps to do to uh, grab whatever I'm grabbing So right there, that's the guilty party. <laughs> and you can kind of see as I released it, I held on kind of a second too long. And, and you can see the impact on the, on the head, you know. And if you're in the buncher, you can feel it. And uh, so I, I feel like that's something definitely to avoid. What you want is that real gentle motion. You know, you're really releasing the tree into its fall, you know. And, uh, when you're in a good groove, or when I'm in a good groove, you know, you're, you're swinging back and you're lined up and you release it and you put it where you want it, you know. It's a, just a nice, smooth, easy motion all day long. Yeah, so anyhow, there we have it for today. Hope it's interesting. If you have any comments or, you know, different techniques, you know, if you're on a wheeled buncher, I would assume that the technique might be similar, but um, I sure would be interested in hearing from you. Yeah, we've been doing this about a year now. It's been a lot of fun. Talked to some really great people. We really appreciate it. And, uh, so yeah, I hope uh, everybody has a good, safe holiday. And uh, as always, uh, thanks for watching. Be safe.